On this episode of World Tracks, we take a look at a student from SK's foreign exchange program. The magical feast was better than ever this year, and we review some black and white movies. So sit down, relax, and enjoy this fifth edition of Wolf Tracks. Hi, and welcome to this edition of Wolf Tracks. I'm Kelly Evans, the ASP treasurer here at South. And I'm Jess Yorn, the ASP vice president. Kelly, did you know that the magical feast is one of the best productions the high school program's ever put on? You know, I did hear that. I heard it was the best ever, so let's take a look. Welcome to the third annual Magical Feast. This year's Magical Feast was held at the Adventure Faith Church on November 30th, December 1st, 7th, and 8th. As you walked in, you were greeted by a table who took your ticket, called out your name and table number in a British accent, blasting you back centuries as you entered through the large double doors. I'm Jeremy Vandenbos, and uh, I'm a beggar in the Magical Feast. And what I do is I simply go around and steal food from the people that are around, and it's lots of fun. As you venture through the large double doors, you enter a grand chamber with the concert choir meandering about, playing the roles of beggars, wenches, and pages. They provide a superb atmosphere. Hi, I'm Michelle Boyd, and I'm a wench for the Magical Feast, and I serve dinner and sing. Dinner was a full meal, eaten like you were in the 14th century. Don't mention silverware or else. I don't know, but they have one! They have one! Oh my god! What is that? It's a boy! My name is Philip Wilson, I play Merton Sire, and he's kind of a foppish kind of character but uh, you know it doesn't reflect my personality my favorite line is I would rather have a hundred pages lay eggs in my mouth the performance was a great story of two arranged marriages and who would marry whom two daughters are meant to marry two men Gorgonzola is the undesirable bachelorette who must marry first Olivia must marry second and she is much more desirable in the end, it all comes down to a fight with, yes, the French baguette. The play even involves the audience, adding an interesting twist. It went really well. Uh, we were a little nervous about things, but I thought it went really well. The music department would like to thank the people listed on the screen. Without them, the magical feast would not have been possible. Thank you for your profound vocabulary, Kelly. You're welcome. Um, however, South Kids have students across the water have their own styles. Let's, Let's take a look. Let's take a look. The Kitsap area is full of musical talent. Some even say the music scene has shifted away from Seattle to the Kitsap area because of all the bands that have formed. I asked some of the local musicians in the band Bilbo what they thought of the music scene. Right now, um, in the area, some of them are some of them are right. I mean, I don't really like most of them, but um, they they try, you know. And the the new bands that are coming up right now, I don't I don't, I don't like them all that much. They they're too much. Uh, they try to copy the mainstream bands, and they don't they're not really original at all. Oh yeah, a lot, there's a lot of good bands. None that are really my type of music that I like, but uh... But it's not as easy as it looks. It takes a lot of effort before you can play a good show. Even the more experienced musicians like local music instructor Tim Birch have to practice to play well and put on a good show. To, get, to give a good show, a consistent good show, we have to be in practice all the time. It's you know, like three days a week, you know, minimum, and uh, and stay stay up on gigging because there's some experience you can't get any other place than on the gig. So what does the general public think of the local music scene? I know there's a few bands around here, but they aren't very well known. Um, I think it's really good, a lot better than a lot of stuff we have around. 
Yeah, I know some friends that have some bands they've started, and then a lot of their stuff is pretty good, and it's worth listening to, and it's fun to go have to their little concerts they got. People are more into music now than they were before, and so they want to get better at it. But in the end, all the practice and hard work is worth the feeling you get when the crowd is cheering. We're going to take a short little break right now so you enjoy these PSAs. soon to the South Kitsap Theater. It's Brigadoon. Recently, auditions were held and cast was selected. Production is now in full swing. The AM Stagecraft class is currently in the process of constructing the sets. It's a large task, but everyone's willing to work. Actors spend many after-school hours in rehearsal. As you can see, Brigadoon is a work in progress, but we all look forward to seeing the results. Four buying, okay? Okay. Alright, you know, you're just driving down the road, just cruising about 36 miles per hour. That's as fast as my Panto goes. <laughs> All of a sudden, I, I can feel it, I sense the road, I smell, I can feel it in the grip of the steering wheel. Yeah, it's a dirt road off to the left. So I hang a left, okay? Get her going about 26 up this 8 foot incline. Boom! Hit it hard. Hit it real hard. I love four buying. It's a. <laughs> God, I love floor buying. So, <clears throat> should we watch the story now? No, you know what? I have the I station think, I think we should watch the, the story. Station yeah, we're going to go to the story the now. Machine. I love story? it. I love that. It's real exciting, especially when you go on some place they're pretty tippy. You kind of lean in, it feels like you're going to roll over. That's why you got a roll cage. And going up hill climbs and you can't, you can't see, you're just looking up at the sky. Generally, your first time four buying is enough to get you hooked. Got started when my brother Adam, he took me out in his truck. And it was during the winter and it was real muddy and Went over these cool hill climbs and stuff, and it was just amazing what we could get over in a truck. And I like doing it. I tried it in my truck. It's stock. It didn't, it didn't work too good. So I had to go out and buy a Samurai with a lot of lift on it. So I could go over a lot more stuff than him. The choice of your vehicle is vital to a successful 4 by an expedition. Ideally, you like more of a four-wheel drive. It's two-wheel drive. It's can't go as many places and you have to have somebody else along with you. I was fortunate enough to go behind the scenes with one of those adrenaline duckies. Next time you're out driving and see a beefed up four-wheel drive vehicle, you may think twice before you cut them off. You know what is the most boring thing in the world? Black and white movies. <laughs> Who watches black and white movies? My gosh, I don't even think I've stayed up for 20 seconds of a black and white movie. All the love stories. Why can't they just have color? Black goes to purple. All of a sudden, special effects. Where's the special effects, Kelly? What is it with guys and special effects? I mean, as long as there's some big car chase or there you go. aliens flying around in spaceships, then you guys are happy. What's the deal? I think we should take it back. Take it back to the good old days. When the movies were driven by plots, not just some showy cars and aliens. Gosh, it's 
so ridiculous. So anyways, let's watch the story. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Wolf Jack's Movie Reviews. I'm Tom, and this is my co-host, Phil. Hello. This week's episode is Black and White Movies, or the greatest movies that you've never seen. We roam the halls of SK and ask the question, do you like black and white movies? Here are the results. A black and white saw are the way to watch video and movies today. Not particularly. I, yeah, don't watch them because I like color better. So I don't hate black and white movies and I don't love them, but there's nothing wrong with them. Well, it was a mixed decision. So let's review a few black and white movies. First up is a Stanley Kubrick classic, Dr. Strangelove. An insane general starts a process to nuclear holocaust that a war room of politicians and generals frantically tried to stop, starring Peter Sellers, George C. Scott, and James Earl Jones. We've always seen dark comedies, but they've been a lot lighter than this one. This was a really good dark comedy and uh, definitely one of the greatest black and white movies of all time. And Peter Sellers' performance is absolutely fantastic. I suggest this movie to anyone who's a movie fan. Our next movie is the John Frankenheimer classic, Manchurian Candidate. After Harvey returns from the Korean War as a decorated hero, the other members of his platoon can't really remember what he did to win his medals. Two of the soldiers start having recurring nightmares and one of them decides to investigate. This is a, is a really great movie. It, it's, it actually doesn't get as much credit as it deserves. Frank Sinatra's performance in it is wonderful. I would, I would suggest this movie to anyone who is a fan of Sinatra or a fan of army movies in general. This movie was a very good psychological thriller, and it's good to see what happens after the war instead of just like action, action, action. Instead, there was more plot and more character development in this movie. It's actually a really good movie. Our next movie is F.W. Murnau's Nosferatu. This movie is one of the earliest vampire films. The movie Shadow of the Vampire told a dramatized version of the making of this film. Face it, folks, Max Schreck wasn't a vampire. I thought this movie was actually very creepy. For 1950s when it was made, it was it was a revolutionary film of its time. It was uh, it was a really good vampire thriller. I've I've seen a few of those John Carpenter's vampires and things like that, but uh, this was a really good vampire movie. Well, that's it for our show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. We're gonna take a break here. Everybody go and enjoy the PSAs. My day's been so bad today. I don't, the people at school, I, don't, I try to talk to them, but they don't talk to me. They just ignore me. I'm almost failing all of my classes. And like, I try to talk to the teachers, but they, they, they don't listen to me either. And, and like, I don't even have friends. And like, it just seems like it's not worth it. You know, like to even come to school or do anything, I should just stay at home and like, I don't know, stay in bed all day, play with my cat or something because like, I don't know, it just seems that nobody cares and like, it's not worth it anymore. Not, not to make me feel this bad. So you think smoking is fun? Every time you smoke, you inhale over 4,000 chemicals. 401 of them cause cancer. Acid, mercury, lead, cadmium, nicotine, DDT, arsenic, benzene, benzopyrene, urethane, phenyl, formaldehyde, tar, carbon monoxide. Do you call that fun? One of the great things about sign language is being able to talk about your friends in front of your friends. You know, me and my buddy, we were so stoked to go to the sign choir, so we hopped in the Pinto, put in the A-track, and remember, we couldn't read the signs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so seriously though, here is a clip of a recent sign choir performance. For years, South Kitsap High School has been known for having the best choirs you've ever heard. But there's one choir here at SK that you haven't heard, and probably never will. This is a South Kitsap Sign Choir, a group of young men and women dedicated to bringing deaf culture into the South Kitsap community. The kids would actually try and pick up on the signs that we were doing with it that we didn't teach them, and a lot of them were doing it, so it was really cool.
The Sign Choir provides fun mixed with a little bit of culture that everyone can enjoy. I've been wanting to join the Sign Choir since I was young when I went to church and there was a lady that interpreted all the songs for all the people out in the crowd. Wanted to get better at sign language, have some fun. Sign Choir recently completed an elementary school tour during the month of December, traveling to five different elementary schools and one Mexican restaurant. Taking a break from the tour, the sign choir stopped at El Sombrero for a bite to eat. As a thank you to the staff, the sign choir provided some live entertainment for the customers of the restaurant. After completing the tour, the sign choir held a Christmas concert here at SK. For those of you who missed it, the sign choir will be doing another concert in the spring. The sign choir is always looking for fresh faces, so if you want to be a part of something truly unique, learn a new skill, or just want to meet new people, come on down to Miss Johnson's room every Wednesday after school and have some fun. I have the most amazing story for you. If you can believe this, our superintendent, Bev Cheney, has been riding the ferries again. From Southworth to Seattle. It's amazing. Kel, Kel, can you imagine this? Being in charge of Mr. Colombini? I mean, Mr. Colombini, can you bring me some cheese, some coffee, salad, fruit? I mean, whatever you, whatever you want. <clears throat> well, uh, since we're on a one-syllable basis here, Jess Jess, <clears throat> there's a lot more to it than that. She's in charge of the whole district, and it's another great way for her to just get out there and talk to people. So, here's a story. This year, SK has a new superintendent, Bev Cheney. She wrote on the Fauntleroy Ferry, meeting and greeting the parents and students of South Kitsap School. Well, actually, the idea came from a parent who had emailed me, and had uh, I invited her to come in and visit. So she and her husband came and talked to me in my office, and she said that there are a lot of people who commuted on the um, Southworth Ferry, and so wouldn't have an opportunity to come into night meetings and things, and so suggested I might want to ride the ferry. So that's what started it all. And we did one in earlier this year, and this is our second one. But this time, there was a special performance by SK High School's own highlighters. We here at Wolf Tracks decided to join in the meet and greet. We followed her onto the ferry and watched her work her magic. A lot of parents thought it was really great that they could find out what was going on at our schools without having to go to a school board meeting. I think uh, the Bev coming out here and uh, getting out in the community uh, especially with uh, a lot of us parents that commute over to Seattle uh, is a good thing. Uh, a lot of us, I know, when we get home out there working a long day, the last thing we want to do is go and uh, have to go to board meeting. Mrs. Cheney was very friendly and loved meeting all the parents. Oh, um, I really love being in South Kitsap. It's, I'm finding everybody to be real friendly and uh, very helpful and the students are probably some of the best around that I've met so it's it's been great fun um, and I, I'm finding that the staff um, is very um, highly skilled and, and competent so having a great time. This was a great opportunity for people to meet the new superintendent. If you didn't get a chance to make this ferry ride you can meet Bev Cheney at any of the public school board meetings. Here at South Kitsap, we have a wonderful foreign exchange program. Kelly, did you just say foreign exchange? I love the foreign exchange students. Oh my gosh, you don't even understand how much I love them. I was talking to one the other day. He was talking about the gum that they eat. <laughs> that would be so they cool if gum. I could eat their gum. Okay, so oh my let's, let's see the story. I love them. This is Peter. He is a foreign exchange student from Germany. Peter leads a pretty normal life most of the time. But you do wonder sometimes how they do it. These people that come from a different country, such as Germany, just learn the language and haven't the slightest problem at adapting. So I decided to follow him around for a day and see just how he does it. Hessen? Hessen, or is that near big city? No, no. You think that Hessen is the town or something? No. Hessen is the area like Washington? We have different areas, oh, yeah. and uh, Hessen is in the middle of the um, west. My town is Stadelndorf, it's near Frankfurt. Oh yeah, it was very friendly, yeah. The first day and all stuff, um, I speak with a lot of people and they were very friendly. And you go, but I think they are friendly, yeah, it's yeah. almost the same, I think. I have a girlfriend here now, oh, but I was, uh, it's not yet my girlfriend. My best friend um, is now, it's a Japanese foreign exchange student. 
It's Snow. The name's Snow. I have uh, today lunch with him, I think. I like the lunch, yeah. It's good. What goes on? You go with me today to lunch? Mm -hmm. My school in Germany is bigger. bigger with the area, but not we have buildings here, 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 and here. It's all over the, a big area. Yeah, a little bit. It's too crowded here. Uh, it's my teacher. Yeah. I forgot his name. <laughs> oh man, my favorite teacher is Mr. Juvik. <laughs> late. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I sleep sleep too long. Slept over so five minutes easier. It's easier here. Yeah, I must. Almost do nothing. Are you serious? I'm serious. When you go to Germany, we have so much homework. Um, we don't have after school activities so much like here. And, uh, we, um, our school don't have this. You can play um, basketball. Oh, I, uh, I hate German music. I don't know. Yeah, it's bad. Music groups or what? Yeah. Uh, like Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre. Do you like Eminem? Eminem, yeah, it's okay. It's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, Exhibit. Um, uh, R&B like um, Nelly. So there you have it. Not what you would expect from a foreign exchange student, is it? In working with Peter and following him around for the day, I found him to be very personable, nice, and passionate about his schoolwork. The German work ethic has really been instilled in him, and I'm sorry you didn't get to see more examples of that. But you did get to see an example of a fine young man, well on his way for a successful career. Um, thank you very much for joining us in this episode of Wolf Tracks. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Kelly Evans. I'm Jesse. And we'll uh, see you next time. Hi, and welcome to this edition of Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, did you know that this year the music per... Kelly, did you know that our music per... Kelly, did you know that this year's music production... <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, did you know that this year... The, the escape... The, uh, <laughs> Kelly, did you know that the music... The music... The musical. The musical. musical. Our superintendent... I mean, Mr. Colombini, bring me some coffee. I mean, Mr. Colombini, can you please bring me some coffee? <laughs> and he nails his part again. I mean, Mr. Colombini, can you bring me some coffee? How about some donuts, some cheese, anything? Fruit plates. <laughs> Eight foot incline with the Pinto. I got her up to about 34. I hit the it, Pinto about 34 miles per hour. Get it right up the eight foot incline. Oh, it is. It is. It's an off road. Take the Pinto on there. Take a left. Going about 34 up the eight mile incline. Or eight foot. You know what? Get her going about 26 up this eight foot incline. Boom. Hit it hard. Hit it real hard. Boom. Hit it hard. Hit it real hard. So me and my buddy were getting there in our panto, right? We're putting on the A track. And we we're about to get there, but look at the sign.